Whistle rockets are a tremendous amount of fun. However, there's such a large variety of different whistle fuels that are commonly used within the fireworking community, it can be kind of hard to figure out where to start. So today we're going to be discussing one of my favorite all-time whistle fuels. This is a potassium benzoate whistle fuel that works great with rocket tool sets with tall core burning spindles. Now this particular whistle fuel is easy to make, it's super reliable, it's got great lifting power, and it's also got a really deep, rumbly, throaty noise to it when it burns. The chemicals used to produce this particular flavor of whistle fuel include potassium perchlorate at 64 parts, potassium benzoate at 32 parts, and copper oxychloride at 2 parts. Now it's very important when you're making whistle fuel to make sure that each of these ingredients, each of these chemicals, is as finely milled as possible. Whether you run them through a ball mill or a coffee grinder or another milling system, it's very important that the uh, particle size on each of these individual chemicals is as fine as possible. It's also very important not to ever mill any of these ingredients together. Mill them individually. And we're going to go ahead and start the process of making our whistle fuel now. To make our whistle fuel, we're going to use the bagging method. Now, the safest way to work with this whistle fuel is to desensitize it a little bit. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add three parts Vaseline dissolved in 75 grams of lacquer thinner, so roughly a third cup for this 500 gram batch. The easiest way to dissolve this Vaseline and lacquer thinner is to use a Pyrex jar and set the lacquer thinner Vaseline mixture in a pot of warm water. That will melt the Vaseline and then we can mix that in with the lacquer thinner. Now the whole purpose of having this Vaseline dissolved in lacquer thinner is to help desensitize the fuel and it's also going to help lubricate the fuel. So as we're pressing a rocket, that Vaseline that remains in the fuel after the lacquer thinner has evaporated off is going to allow that fuel to compress completely within the tube so we won't have any cracks, uh, voids, fissures, or air pockets in the fuel rings. Those sorts of defects are what can cause Kato's or what can cause rockets to explode at liftoff. So by adding this three parts Vaseline to our whistle fuel, not only is it a lot safer to work with, but it's also going to produce a rocket that is much more reliable. So to get started, we've got a plastic bag. We're gonna go ahead and add our potassium benzoate to our bag. And we're gonna add our copper oxychloride to our bag. Notice that we're not adding the potassium chlorate just yet. Now let's go ahead and add our Vaseline lacquer thinner mixture to our potassium benzoate copper oxychloride mixture right here. And again, all we're gonna do is just dump our dissolved Vaseline and lacquer thinner into our bag. Go ahead and close it up a little bit and just knead it for a second. Now again, this really desensitizes the mixture. So we can safely add our potassium perchlorate to our mixture. And continue to just gently knead this for a second or so. We're just trying to get that Vaseline lacquer thinner mixed all throughout the inside of our, our fuel here. Now it's time to start the process of screening our whistle fuel. I found that about six screening seems to be about right in making this particular fuel. Now what we're doing during the screening process is we're going to be running our fuel mixture through oh, about a 12 mesh screen somewhere in the, uh, the window screen. Uh, mesh size ballpark seems to work pretty well. But what we're going to do is by screening this half a dozen times, it's going to allow us to make a homogeneous mixture with that potassium perchlorate, the potassium benzoate, the copper oxychloride, and the Vaseline mixed throughout our fuel. So to get started, that fuel that we have in our bag that we've been needing, just go ahead and dump it on your screen. And some of it's going to stay in the bag, we'll take care of that here in a minute. All right, and the first screening, you really just want to kind of get the whistle fuel through the screen without forcing it, without grating it. Again, the whole idea is just to create a nice, solid, homogeneous mixture. 
You can see that I'm using the bag along with my gloves to help push it through the screen. This will get any of the uh, fuel that's still attached to the side walls of the bag uh, back into the screen. Now the first screening tends to be the most difficult because your comp's a little bit wetter than it normally would be. If your uh, comp is a little bit too wet to screen, just go ahead and let it set out for five, 10 minutes or so to, to dry. Let some of the lacquer thinner evaporate away. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and screen this a half dozen times. We just finished up our final screening of our whistle fuel. Now we're gonna set this aside to dry. It usually takes about two hours or so for this particular formula to be ready to use. When it no longer smells like lacquer thinner or solvent, it's ready to go. That's been two hours and our whistle fuel is now dry and ready for use. But one of the things I like to do with my whistle rockets is to have a nice white bushy tail. The easiest way to do that is to add a little bit of titanium to the whistle fuel that we're gonna press in above the spindle. So I've set aside 100 grams of our benzoate whistle fuel here that we just made, and I've added 10 grams of 80 mesh titanium sponge. 
And to mix this together, we're just gonna diaper it real quick. Pick up one corner of our sheet. Just keep kind of tumbling this whistle fuel over itself until we've got that titanium mixed in nicely. And it just takes a couple minutes to do this. But this will give us a great effect up in the sky. All right, now we've got our whistle fuel with a little bit of titanium to give us a nice white tail up in the sky. So it's time to start building a rocket. 